Hey, glad you came back. I'm Vern Thayer and this is Capture Nature's Beauty. I have a painting here that we started last time. So we got up to this point here and we let it dry. And we, uh, we're working off of this. So we're at the point now we'll be doing putting in the highlights. And uh, there is a, a road or a driveway here. We, I didn't put that in. Uh, I didn't think it added to the, to the picture. So what we'll do today is finish it up, I, I hope. All right. Now, by the way, this is uh, on Quonset Road in Menden. And it's a, it's a dead end street, but way up at the end is the entrance to um, the, uh, I don't know what they, they call it, if it's a con uh, conservation place or Menden State Forest or what. But anyhow, you get up to the end of it and it gets into a dirt road and you park up there and it's pretty nice. But uh, on the way up, it's beautiful, beautiful scenery. Um, this is the second picture I've done in that, up that area. So you ought to check that out, especially in the fall. I thought I saw this and I thought, oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to paint that. All right. Okay, so I got my colors out here. I got titanium white, uh, cadmium uh, yellow light, cad cadmium yellow medium, Indian yellow, yellow deep. Orange, cadmium orange, alizarin crimson, cadmium red deep, French ultramarine blue, sap green, and a medium I'm using as liquid. All right, so let's get started. I don't need that big brush. And I think what I'll do is start with the stuff that's far away back here. And I don't want to make make it too much detail. Uh, I want to keep that quiet, keep that pushed back there. Um, so I think I might, I'd, hmm, I might add a little darkness down here to give us contrast for this yellow here. We can darken that up. We can do a, a glaze. Let's, let's start with that. Get some alizarin crimson. I like to use French ultramarine blue and some alizarin crimson. And you'll get a dark color. This is a little bit blue. I'm gonna add some more. There we go. It looks like it's almost black, doesn't it? Okay, so for brush, I will use just a small one. This is just a filbert, number four. And it's a bristle brush, so I'm gonna put that in there like that. And you can see how that darkens that up. And yet you can see through you see the uh, trunks of the trees back there, and you still see some yellow. Okay, another thing we do is we step back, squint. You squint so that you Take away all the fine detail and you see more of the bold blocks of color in that. All right. I could do some dark over here even though it doesn't have it. And you know what, I just, 
I'm going to do it. Even though it's not in the picture, um, I want to make sure that when I put the colors on here, they stand out. I need some more of that color here. That went a little darker than I wanted. We'll lighten that up. You notice I lightened it up with this yellow here instead of white. I don't use white too much if I can help it. It makes it, uh, or it can make it kind of chalky. Yeah, I like that. Put some on here. Again, I could get a brush and try to put every every little piece of leaf down. But I have a <laughs> I run into a problem when I get doing stuff with a brush like that. If I have a lot to do, I end up trying making space all the same, all in order. It looks like a a crossword puzzle or something. I want variety, I want chaos because the leaves are scattered everywhere. There's no pattern to it. But I know I'm not the only one that has that problem. Make things random is all, not all that easy. You have to uh, not care too much got to be free. So let's steal some yellow and put some yellow in there. See that's lightened up somewhat. Same, I'm using the same paper towel. Now, let's see what happens when we do it up here, see? Now that comes out pretty Pretty nice uh, with the darker orange behind it. And that stands out pretty well. In, I keep stepping back because I want to get the view how it looks back here. And uh, squint a bit. I'm following this picture fairly close because it, it's just right. It's, I like everything in there, pretty much. If there was something I really wanted to change, I, I wouldn't have a problem doing that. I wouldn't have a problem doing that. Okay, now we got, uh, let's get, lighten it up some more. Let's get some of this light yellow. Now, you notice I'm not using much liquid in this now. But uh, the liquid will help it dry faster. But that's not a problem for me now. This can uh, hang around at the house and not uh, be in the way or anything, and I'll let it dry. And that ha what happens a lot is uh, when I take these home, I'll hang it on the wall, let it dry, and I'll, st I'll, st I'll look at it every day, come out to the studio and I'll see it, and before you know it, I've got it on the easel and making some changes. <laughs> now this yellow I'm putting on is going to hit some of this orange, and it'll blend in and I will get a yellow that's been shaded by this 
dark orange in there, the brown. And I can uh, blend it a little bit like that. Yeah. Now this lighter color, I'm gonna put some leaves down here. And I'm gonna put some right there. I can get it off this paper towel. I just wanna get it on that. Not too much. This is where the sun's hitting it. Goes right up along there. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I didn't bring one of the brushes I would have liked. Well, maybe see how this does. I just want to soften. If you can see what I'm doing here, I can use my right hand for this, I suppose. I'm softening the edges. It's a form of kind of blending. I can be dexterous, I can use either hand. You do this type of thing when you've got clouds too. You want to soften the edge with clouds because it's got to look light and fluffy. There's not many times that you'll see a hot edge. I want to tap it like that. I don't want to tap and drag. Red. Take this dark red. Now you gotta see, that's way too, too red. See, we're trying to match this color here. So that's w way too red. Now what cuts red back? A little bit of green. See that? So that's not so bright now. Okay, I'm going to go with that for a little bit. Let's see how that that works for me. Because I'm thinking that red will blend in with some of the, the lighter colors that we put in here. All right, let me see what I get here. Um, yeah. Yep. I'm happy with that. Now this, I might not blend in as much as I did the other colors. With this. Let's see what I can do with this. I'm not doing every leaf. I'm trying to make the clumps. You know, if you look at a tree, there's a, a hundred leaves in this group here, and then a hundred in this group here, and more over here. So I'm trying to just do those big blotches of leaves.
gotta step back and see what I got here. There we go. Some Mendinho. Let me get some of this right over here then. Yeah, that works out better. That works out better. There we go. That's better. We do have some green to contend with. Now we don't have to put the green in there, but um, I think it adds to it. I think it adds to it. Um, let me take a little bit of this one. So we lighten this green up a little bit. So let me put some green over here in this one. There we go. Where's that brush that I was blending with? There it is. Still got the orange on it, but that's okay. I just wanna, we can use that, that's all right. Now we do have some green and it's good to have it right here. This is going to work out good. Put that green there. But I think I'll make that, uh, instead of the same green, let's change it up a little bit. Let's make it a lighter green. Yeah. Make it a lighter green. a bush. So what I'm doing is getting some of this color on the bristles of the brush, transferring it over here because I just want to lightly. Now we can put on some texture. So I'm, uh, I'm not painting like this. I'm laying the brush kind of flat and just kind of dragging it, touching it. And that's giving it the illusion of leaves. I'm not painting every leaf, but it looks like it's got plenty of leaves. Right, and now we'll go away from the bright yellow I'll go, and go back to the medium yellow. Because this is further back. The sun is not reaching this area as, as much or as bright. All right. 
Now I'm rolling the brush a little bit. So that's, yeah, I like that. We'll bring this over a little bit, over this dark, darkness of the tree trunk. That'll give it a contrast. Yeah. I can't go across this trunk though. This trunk is further this way. Stay over there. You notice I didn't blend in the highlights too much. <clears throat> That's laying on top of the on top of the undercolor there, the darker one, the one we blended in. And this is more crisp on the top. So we get some perspective. All right. Let's uh, let's add a little bit of yellow, faintly over here. I'm just blending it in a little bit. I might even tap it out a little bit. Just show that there's some, and maybe, maybe uh, I'll do a little bit in there. It's not that red in the picture, but I want it to be red. Do have leaves that red. And when I pulled up here, it looked like that forest was in fire. <laughs> With the bright yellows and the and the reds. Alright, let me let me take some of that and I'm gonna cut it back a little bit. Let me use this. Okay, let's see if we can get some kind of texture here. The 
the leaves have fallen. There's some red ones here. Now with this, I will use some white because I want a gray. And I want some, there we go. Sun's hitting here. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe the knife would be better. Uh, better served to do that. Let's see. Let's try it. Let's try it. I can just drag it a little bit where the sun's hitting it. Yeah. Get some darkest, some darkest stuff here. We'll go on this side. Some darker stuff because this is the shadow. Sun's coming from this side here. And this dark shadow line will be great right on the edge here. And there's the bright yellow right, at, right next to it. Sorry, you can't see. My hand shakes. My hand shakes. I'm trying to give the illusion of, of textured back. And when the sun shines on the tree, it doesn't 
doesn't give you a light and dark side as smooth like an orange or an apple in still life. The bark breaks it up the light a little bit. Let me get some some of this purple over here. Steady my hand. Shadow there. Now I got to mix up some some branches. That might be too, too dark. We can uh, lighten that up a little bit. Of, using white again a little bit because I want the, the gray. I want to gray it out a little bit. Okay. So we need a thin brush with long hairs. And I have two. I have one that's a bit thicker. You can see that. And I got this one here that's thinner. And you'll see when they get wet how much thinner that lighter colored one is. So we can go to some fine detail for branches if we want to. Let's get this down here. So we'll have this branch going right over that. Right up there. Get a, let's put a branch up here. And maybe show some tree, tree trunk here. You know that tree goes all the way up to the top, right off the canvas. Put something there too. If we darken it in between these yellow dots and here, that will bring more contrast. Okay. Now let me switch to the other one, the other brush. Now, a lot of this I would be doing when this is dry, and then I could just get on there and do. But we don't need, and I would, <laughs> I would have an all too. Nothing I can, well, maybe I can use this. So I can study my hand. This is gonna, gonna make that lighter. Make this lighter. Let's put a branch to 
light, too light. You got to watch your values. I'm not a professional on values either. But you got to keep control of them. Otherwise, it sticks out like a sore thumb. There's something ain't right. See, that's too light for that brown, that tree. That's better. That's better. That looks more natural. Okay, now let's have this branch. Whoop. Let's show that these have some too light. Too dark. <laughs> Just right. Look at that. There we go. I made all straight trees back there, but there's, there's branches. There's branches all over the place. We gotta show a little bit. We just wanna give the illusion. Yeah, that's, that's good. All right, let's see. Do we need any more branches anywhere? Well, what if we made it so that you can see a little, well, okay, let's make it lighter. Get it nice and light. Here we go. You're gonna see a little burnt tree. Yeah. Up. Uh, see. You see what I did? I put that right down the middle between those two. I can't help myself. Now how do we fix that? We put another one over here, put it on an angle, put it a little bit taller maybe. She comes down like this, cuts across all the way over here, there. Put some branches on it. Now those other two branches like that, or trees like that, in the for real, I don't see it. But that's all right. There's got to be some trees somewhere back there. There's nothing to hold your brush, so that you have to do every little leaf. That's what they have cameras for. Connect this. It's got to have a branch down here. Coming up there, go right across. There we go. Now, oh, there's no branches holding these red ones together. We gotta fix that. Good golly, Miss Molly. All right, let's. Take this and make this a bigger branch coming up here.
leaves up there. I think we need something to hold these leaves up. Let's do a little bit down here. This here, that's a tree behind here. Let's show his trunk coming up through here. How's that work? That's all right. All right, I think so. I think that's gonna work. I think I gotta go a little bit darker. It's got a trunk and it's going all the way up. Yeah. Well, I think that's that's pretty good. I think that's pretty good. I managed to get the paint all over my hands and my shirt, so that job, part of the job is done. I could uh, fool around with it for another hour or two and not necessarily look any better than it is now. I like the way the yellow highlights here. I, I'm gonna highlight the red a little bit. Let's see what kind of light red we get if we use alizarin crimson. Okay. And some white. We'll have to use a lot more white for that because that's, as I said before, alizarin crimson is pretty potent. See the difference between that red and that red when you add, of course I got a lot of white in there, but I think that, I don't think that looks, I think that's too, too pink. I want it to look like highlight. Let me steal a little bit of that color in there. Maybe it's a combination of the two. I think that works. All right, let me see. I think that works. So the sun's hitting. Maybe it's a little bit too pink. We 
you can fix that. We'll blend that in a little bit. Take the pink out of there. Yeah. So if I said that was a little too pink, we'll get some of this over here. Yeah, I like that. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we can put some flowers in here, some kind of thing. What kind of flower blooms pink in the fall? I don't know. I don't know. This is where my license comes in. This is where my license comes in. We'll call them, those are cat paws. How's that? And some of you say, I never heard of that. Oh, and you tell me, yeah, they're, they're pretty rare in New England. I saw him, see? I saw him right up in that road. It's only the second time in my life I ever saw cat paws. <laughs> oh, you gotta have fun. I like that. Let's let's bring it down here a little bit too. That fun that we had. What have we accomplished here? Let's take that off there. The blue tape doesn't stay too long. So I have to do the corners with the masking tape. That stays longer. But the blue tape is easy to peel off. Okay. You know, that's, that is nice. I like that. I like that. Now see, compared to the picture we had, we changed it. We changed it, it's not the same picture. It's not a photograph. We didn't put the sign in. We didn't put the driveway or the road in there. Another sign over here, we didn't put that in. We took what we liked and added what, uh, what wasn't there, what we added to it, like the cat paws. <laughs> People are going to be texting me asking me what the heck a cat paw flower is. Yeah. Yes, you can have fun. You can have fun. Paint. Paint. And paint without thinking you're gonna become a Da Vinci and you'll have a great time. You have a great time. So now, now I have to find another place to paint for the next, yeah, the next episode. And as we've been saying, if you know a place, give us a, give us a heads up and uh, we'll come out and have a look, take some pictures and if you're able to be there, while we're, we are, we'll let you know. You can come and watch and maybe tell us a little bit why a certain spot is special, why you like it. But if we have plenty of in the surrounding area, 
in town, we have plenty of places to paint. But I haven't been everywhere, so maybe you've been to that special spot and I can get a picture of painting. But um, please, please, if you're interested in painting, try it. Try it. And if you want to get more involved, find someone to teach us and uh, go and enjoy it because the adventure of painting never stops being enjoyable. You're always learning something new. There's always something that you didn't know that you learned. Anyway, in the meantime, I hope you will come back and watch nature, capture nature's beauty with me. And uh, until then, grab a brush. Keep painting.